We have Vern, who is seven months, cr seven months pregnant, pregnant, pregante. Hello there, my name is Mackenzie and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today we're doing another mood and releases video. This is for May. Can you believe it? We're already almost halfway through 2021. Are you kidding me? Yeah, we're there. It's May. So let's start with the mood as per usual. The mood for May and what I've been kind of continuing to feel, I've dubbed it, are you ready? Vampires at the beach. Are you loving it? I'm loving it. Because I'm kind of thinking like Marceline the Vampire Queen under an umbrella in the sun. It's sunny, it's warm, summer is coming, and it's exciting. However, I don't want to be out there in the boiling heat. I just like that the world is warmer now. This is also a continuation of last month's mood where I'm kind of really just in for like a spooky vibe, even though it's summer and warm. I'm definitely here for the weather of summer, but I want the spooky vibes. I could have gone with Summer Ween, which came from Gravity Falls, but Olivia reads a latte and Gabby reads do a book club called Summer Ween or something along those lines, so I didn't want to step on their toes. I'm just going to stick to Vampires at the Beach because it's basically more what I think of myself as. On to releases. May has a bunch of great releases coming up and I'm super excited. So we're gonna start with May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Are you excited? I'm excited. The first book I want to talk about is The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan He. This currently has a 4.18 rating on Goodreads. And this is basically about two sisters. One of them is trapped on an island and she has no memory except that she has a sister out there and she's trying to get off the island to go and find her sister. And then the other sister is like, it's a completely different story. When I was reading the summary, it caught me off, it caught me off guard so bad. So one sister's trapped on an island, she has no memory. The other sister is in this like ecosphere because the world is like destroying itself because of climate change. And, um, it's a very lonely life and her sister didn't want to live that life anymore. So she ran away to that island and now they're trying to find each other. Oh my gosh, it's kind of crazy, okay? So this is obviously sci-fi, fantasy, a little bit of mystery. It was such a strange occurrence reading the summary for this book because the, the cover is really kind of simple and it doesn't give off this like, world ending kind of sci-fi vibe that the summary is giving off. So I'm really hoping that we get kind of this like balance of these two, like not timelines, but perspectives. And it really brings out like the craziness that's happening. Also coming out on May 4th is Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. This also is a 4.18 on Goodreads. And this is basically a retelling of Theseus and the Minotaur and the Labyrinth, if you're familiar. Ariadne gave Theseus the string to help him get through uh, the Labyrinth. So this is kind of a retelling from Ariadne's point of view where her brother is the Minotaur and they have to sacrifice people to him, and one of those people is Theseus, and Ariadne starts to fall in love with him and has to decide if she betrays her family or if she lets Theseus die. So this is another one of those retellings where it's in the vein of telling it from the perspective of the female characters in the story, so that way they feel like more like they have agency in the story and less like they're being shuffled aside. Sorrowland by River Solomon is also coming out on May 4th. It has a 3.92 on Goodreads. So this one is kind of uh, weird, mystical, kind of creepy. So we have Vern who is seven months, seven months pregnant, 
pregnant, pregante. Vern is seven months pregnant and she escapes from her extremely religious cult and runs away to the forest where she gives birth to twins. But even though she's run away off to the woods, she's still being hunted. And so she and her twins kind of have to go off and survive, basically. This kind of has a little bit of horror elements where they're being chased, hunted. And for us as the reader, there's a little bit of a mystery. What's happening? We know it's an extremely religious cult, but to know for sure motivations is always my I love knowing motivation. Sorrowland also has queer rep, which is awesome. And I'm really excited to see how the mystery and fantasy and horror elements kind of come together and what story is actually gonna be being told here. Blade of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller has a 4.24 rating on Goodreads, which is really cool. This one is about Ziva, who is a metal worker, and she is uh, socially awkward and doesn't really like people. She ends up getting a, uh, oh god, what is it called? She ends up getting a commission to create, like, the most powerful sword, and what she ends up creating is a sword that steals secrets. And she creates it for, like, this horrible person, and so the whole book is about her trying to get the sword back so that the world isn't troubled by her creation. It kind of felt a little Frankenstein-esque, where you create something not knowing that it will be horrible in the end. I mean, Frankenstein was a little bit different. We're talking about a sword here and not an actual person made of mutilated dead bodies. But anyway, Blade of Secrets also has a mental health rep, which is gonna be pretty interesting. I hope it's good rep. I wanna see the way that Ziva interacts because she's obviously going to have to have help as she moves through the world and trying to save it from her own sword. So I'm really interested to see how that representation is going to take place. The last book coming out on May 4th is Of Tubes and Tides by Anne Stryker and T.R. Proudy, I think I'm saying that cor correctly. Uh, right now it has no ratings on Goodreads, but it still seems super interesting to me. So Cordelia has gastro... Parisius, Parisis, Gastroparisis. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. I'm sorry if I'm not. Now, basically she's on constant life support because she can't eat. So she has this little backpack that's her like life support baby. And it's, um, she calls it Whaley. So basically she has an interaction with a guy where he accidentally tries to pick up her backpack and it's a whole miscommunication. The guy ends up being, you guessed it, a fairy prince. And <laughs> I'm just thinking about that video, that review that they said about Inamorata, where it was like, the best part about this book is it doesn't have fairies, vampires, or werewolves. And all I tell you guys about are books about fairies and vampires. And I don't think I've told you guys about a werewolf book yet. But, I mean, this is, this is my style, so, you know, whatever. Anyway, the fairy prince is about to be crowned prince, and he needs to get home because his mom is sick, but he falls in love with this girl, and it's kind of just like a fantasy romance, and I'm here for it. After reading Akatar and that whole series, I realized that I'm totally down for fantasy romance. I think that might be, like, my thing. Exactly my thing. Not like it can't be other people's things, but like, I didn't know I had a thing, you know? The next set of books are going to be coming out on May 11th. So firstly, we have Switch by A.S. King. This has a 3.68 rating on Goodreads. This is fantasy, magical realism, YA. True is a teenage girl living in a world that is trapped in space and time. So basically, real time has stopped and humanity is now keeping time on a website that has fake time. So they have fake time happening. Real time has stopped. And in True's house, there is a box. No. In True's house, there's a switch. Directly in the middle of her house, there's a switch. And she doesn't know what the, the switch does, and neither does anybody else. But her father keeps building boxes, bigger and bigger boxes, around the switch. And True exists in box seven. And basically, that's where the summary cuts out. And all I'm sitting here thinking is like, what the heck are you talking about? What do you mean? But I need to know. I need to know. Does the switch turn on time again? Is her father the bad guy? Like, why is true in box number seven? What kind of house structure is this? So many questions and I need them all answered. Like, I can't wait for this book to come out. 
Blackwater Sister by Zen Cho is coming out on May 11th. It has a 3.95 on Goodreads right now. So this is about Jessamine, who is closeted, broke, and moving back to Malaysia. And when she gets there... She starts hearing the voice of her grandmother, who was a medium when she was alive, and also like an avatar for a goddess, the Blackwater sister. So basically, her grandmother is having her avenge her from like a gang who wronged the goddess. And so Jessamine, or Jess, is trying to avenge her grandmother while also trying to make sure that she doesn't get completely... A, like overtaken by the Blackwater sister like during the Avatar state it's very interesting it seems very kind of reminds me a little bit of Gods of Jade and Shadow and so I'm kind of hoping for like a similar feel where it feels kind of like I don't know I love when the divine and the mortals and the mortals I love when the divine and the mortals mix together in media it really creates this dynamic that I love to learn about and to see it come to fruition and how each character might interact with someone differently. I really enjoy that. The Plot by Jean Hanf Korlitz. I think I'm saying that correctly. Hopefully I am. I'm sorry if I'm not. 4.12 on Goodreads currently. So this is basically about Jacob, who is a struggling novelist and a teacher, and one of his promising students dies of mysterious circumstances without publishing a great book. And so Jacob ends up publishing that book under his own name and then proceeds to receive threatening messages knowing that he thieved it. He thief in it. I'm interested in this book, but I kind of want it to be a movie. You know, like it seems like it has all of the potential of being like a, a thrilling kind of mystery movie, but seeing as it is just coming out, I really want to know what's going to happen. So I really want to read the book. It also seems to have more of a unique premise than some of the other mystery and thrillers that have been coming out recently. So I'm really excited about that too. Son of the Storm by Sui Davies Ukumbawa has a 4.03 rating on Goodreads. So this is about Dansa, who is a clever scholar on the cusp of greatness in his walled silly, silly, in his walled city of Basa. But all he wants to do is leave the walled city and go out and explore the myths and kind of fairy tales he's heard about what happens outside the walls. So he begins his journey outside of the walled city of Vasa and leaves his home behind and come to find out as the story progresses, as he gets further and further behind or further and further away from Vasa, chaos is being left in his wake. So this is an adult sci-fi fantasy with West African inspiration, which is totally cool. I love when the inspiration comes from from different cultures and it really brings some inclusivity into it and it really teaches you a lot about other cultures as well. All right, May 18th has our next batch of books. First book that is coming out is my guess for Illumicrate's April Box. It is In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland. In the Ravenous Dark has a 4.16 rating on Goodreads. So this is about Rovin, who has magical powers, and ever since her father's death, she has been hiding her powers because if they find out that you have powers, you will be bound to a soul or a spirit that is based basically going to guard and control you. So through an accidental mishap, Rovin gets found out, is bound to a spirit, and then dropped into a world of palace intrigue and deception. It has polyamory pan representation. I'm so excited for this book. It has a, like fantasy. It is it is. It's fantasy romance, which is the genre, which I'm very excited about because as we just discussed, I feel like that's my niche, right? So I'm very excited for this book. I'm very excited to see uh, the Illumicrate edition and uh, see what kind of beautiful masterpiece they can come up with. Next book coming out on the 18th is Madam by Phoebe Wynn. It has a 3.59 rating on Goodreads. So this is kind of a gothic fiction which centers around an all-girls like boarding school basically that um it claims to ready girls for the future basically so there's a new classics teacher that's being introduced she's the first new hire in a decade 
As the book goes on, she realizes that the boarding school has more conservative views and is getting a little bit creepy, and so we have to deal with that and gothicness ensues. This also has queer representation as well. Next book is The Lights of Prague by Nicole Jarvis. This has a 4.03 rating on Goodreads. So in the city of Prague, all manner of dark creature roam. It's amazing. We follow Domek, who leads a life of fraught encounters with these dark creatures, and he pairs that with quiet moments with a widow named Lady Aura, who has some secrets of her own. So I'm very excited for like this forbidden love thing to happen, you know? Could you imagine if she was a beastling? That would be great. So one of the things that I did learn from Shadow of Night, which kind of threw me for a loop, was that I do like the historical kind of creepy creature in a historical setting aspect. So like vampires or werewolves, I guess I should have known this when I liked Interview with a Vampire. And also there's another book called Ripper by Stephen Petruc Petruca? St Stephen Petruca, which is a Jack the Ripper kind of a story taking place in a historical setting as well. So I should know by this point that I like a, a creepy creature in a historical setting. It's also a niche thing that I enjoy. So I'm very excited for this book, obviously. The last book that I'm excited about coming out on May 18th is The Marvelous Mirza Girls by Sheba Karim. It has a 3.59 rating on Goodreads. This follows Noreen as she attempts to cure her post-senior year slump by traveling with her mom to New Delhi. It's there that she meets Kabir and romance ensues and then something tragic happens in one of their families and they kind of have to decide how far they're willing to go for their love. And I know this is just like a contemporary romance, but it felt so much more like adventurous when I was reading the summary. Probably because it seems also like a little bit of how this is Noreen's culture, but she kind of is a little bit of a fish out of water because Kabir is showing her a lot of the sights and the beautiful aspects of New Delhi. So it looks like, it seems like it'll be a beautiful read and something nice for someone who's not from that culture or who isn't well-traveled at all. May 25th. All right, the book's coming out in May 25th. The first one is Tokyo Ever After by Emiko Jean. It has a 4.26 rating on Goodreads right now. So this is basically Princess Diaries, but for Japan. And like, that's really all I need. And I don't really care too much about the other parts or aspects of the story. I know it's gonna be a little bit YA. I know it's gonna be a little bit like, ooh, princessy, you know? But I'm just here for it. So Izumi finds out that she's the daughter of a prince of Japan, the crown prince. So she goes to Japan to get to know him. And this is where it kind of feels a little bit like, gosh, what a girl wants with Amanda Bynes, where she finds out her dad is like, I don't know, some, some, something awesome in England or something. And she goes there to get to know him and realizes he already has like a family and she has to like get around them to like, you know, have a relationship with her father. And so basically that's what happens with Izumi. She goes and she tries to have a relationship with her father and her cousins are conniving and people are mean to her. And there's a bodyguard that she might be in love with and might be her soulmate. And that is just, it's gonna be perfect. I know it is. So I'm very excited. Ether Bound by Iki Johnston has a 3.20 on Goodreads. I almost said a GPA. So Pent escapes her cruel family at this like space station where she meets these twins who are the children of the owner of that space station. And the whole story I believe is about them trying to take control of the space station. It feels a little bit like there's a heist going on. And also, you know, obviously the found family aspect, but I just kind of want to see like, it seems like just a little bit sci-fi mischief 
and I want to see it. I'm here for it. It seems like a good time. The last book I want to talk about coming out on the 25th is Hani and Ishu's Guide to Fake Dating by Adiba Jagirdar. It has a 4.34 rating on Goodreads. This is so cute and just spoke to me in every sense of the way. So, Hani comes out as bisexual to her friends, and her friends, being the unsupportive people that they are, say, how can you be bisexual if you've never dated a girl? And so ensues the fake dating with Ishu, who is not very popular, wants to be more popular like Hani, and so they fake date. And I'm here for it, because you know what? Fake dating is an amazing trope, and I love it, and it's so cute. But also, that is such a real real situation with bisexual people like you can know that you have an attraction and it's just never happened before you know in real life and it's people question you so hardcore and it's not even funny how real that premise is so I'm so excited for it. Obviously, obviously, that's why I'm talking to you guys about these books. I'm excited for all of them. All right, there's only one book that's coming out on March 27th, but I'm excited for it regardless. It's Threadneedle by Carrie Thomas. It is a 4.19 on Goodreads right now. So basically, it's like a cult. <laughs> I read a lot of these books. I don't know why. I don't know what draws me to them. I just have no idea. So Anna is under the care of her aunt and her aunt has told her that magic is a sin. Having it is a sin. And what you need to do is suppress it. And so Anna is just about to become of age to where she can have her magic bound to where she'll never be able to use it again. And she'll be part of this whole like culty group that her aunt is a part of and she's like the summary says and nothing and no one can change Anna's mind or can it and like obviously obviously I'm very excited I'm glad they didn't like give away too much in the summary but it's kind of a cheesy written summary but I am glad they didn't give anything away. So I'm really excited for that. I really like this kind of like cultish aspect. The Year of the Witching did this as well, where I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is a cult and you need to escape, but you're still here and we're just kind of seeing what happens, you know? And I, oh, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Hurts my heart, makes me sad for these people, but seems interesting enough. Especially when it mentions no one, I'm like, ooh, who might that be? All right, so that's all the books that I am excited about that are coming out in May. Yay, we're very excited. What books are coming out in May that you are excited about? Did you like any of these ones or have I missed one that you're really excited about? Let me know down in the comments and I will see you guys in the next one. Hope you have a good day. Bye.